goal in the game was at Tannadice two months ago. And Mike Galloway faces his old teammates this afternoon, having been a key player for Hearts before the half million pound transfer to Celtic. And since switching to left midfield, he has started to recapture the form which prompted that Celtic investment. And the youngest player on the Celtic side is Derek White, who's just 21. But his stability and composure in defence has been crucial in the club's troubled times this season and could yet earn him a place in the World Cup squad for Italy. Hearts, too, are enjoying an excellent burst of form, thanks particularly to the front three of Cahoon, Robertson and Crabb. But their lead in the league over Celtic could be cut to just one point should they lose today. Gary Mackay is free of suspension but remains on the bench with Neil Berry joining Dave McCreary and Eamon Bannon in midfield. And John Cahoon returns to his former club determined once again to remind them of what they missed when they allowed him to leave nearly five years ago for what now looks to be a paltry transfer fee. Josh McKinley has blossomed at left back for Hearts following his £300,000 transfer from Dundee. He will enjoy the big occasion this afternoon. So the pitch, savaged by the heavy downpour of rain again this morning. In fact, the match was in some doubt earlier on. Referee Brian McGinley having to make a couple of inspections and order some repair work to be carried out to lose some surface water. Certainly playable at the moment, but it will cut up badly. And down goes McCreary. Paul McStay was the culprit. Jack looks up, tries to find his countryman, Jackie Zakonowski. And that's a hard throw. Cahoon winning that from Dubcek. Elliott gets there ahead of Robertson. Safety first tactics from Elliott. Cahoon to Kidd. This is Berry. Misunderstanding up front. There, Crab went inside, and that pass back is just away from him from Dubcek. Bonner clearing his area for a long clearance. Awkward swirling ball, swirling in the wind. Galloway to Jankanowski. Good defending there by Levine, who read that move from Jankanowski. Going to Jankanowski again. Berry makes a good challenge. And goes McPherson, the player making the tackle for Celtic is Peter Grant. Morris, the coin. Here's Jackanowski. Well tackled by Levine. Moments of menace again from the Celtic front men. Here's Elliott being hustled all the way by Robertson. There by Bannon against Grant. Now Cahoon. And given no space at all, closed down very quickly indeed by McStay. So a good play from Hart. There's Cahoon. Back now with McKinley. Cahoon again. Here's Eamon Bannon. Came off Peter Grant's head and the corner kick it is to Hart. Good constructive play coming in the middle of the field from Hearts. It was John Cahoon inspired initially. Eamon Bannon involved at the end. And he will take the corner kick. Dave McPherson right in the six-shot box. Cahoon plays it across. Here's McCreary. Pat Bonner well off his line to cut down the angle. Well, McCreary getting a first clean strike and goal. Cahoon setting it up, playing it across. The clearance broke there to McCreary. Leaning back when he let fly. And Bonner watched it go over. The chase there for McKinley. Well, Drew are closing down very quickly. That's a feature of the Celtic play at the moment. The front three and the midfield three are closing hearts down. Extremely quickly whenever they have possession. Making it difficult for any... Accurate passes to come forward from Hearts. There goes Coyne, he's bundled down by Levine. The referee 
ignores claims for a penalty and it's Cahoon on the break at the other end. And he's well beaten there by Dobchik. Dobchik playing it forward. The Celtic fans still very unhappy indeed about that decision by referee McGinley not to give a penalty kick. But a challenge by McPherson on Coyne inside the area. It was Tommy Coyne who was coming inside. It started from this throw. And Coyne turned away well, came inside, seemed to find a gap, did a little shuffle, and then ran straight into Levine it was who was involved. McPherson taking some abuse from the Celtic fans, reflecting his time at Ibrox. There's McKinney. Yeah, beaten well by White, but it breaks for Bannon. There's John Robertson, and excellent goalkeeping by Pat Bonner. Robertson and Morris clash off the ball. There's no problem, though. An accidental collision, but this is a very dangerous ball played in by Eamon Bannon. Robertson going in very sharply indeed, and courage and good timing there shown by Bonner. Levine's header. Oh, that's great play from Paul McStay. Sent wide by Grant. Perhaps the only player in the country who could have come out of that tight corner was Paul McStay. Coin back to Miller. That's good close footwork again from Miller. Crossing to McKinley. Here's Dobchek. Him coming back to close him down. Levine's header. Wallace slots it in. Offside flag was up against Jekanowski. Robertson coming to the right. Tackle was made by Grant. Marking is very tight again, but very did well. So did Robertson. Here's Cahoon. Bring that back. Here's McKinley touching it on to Bannon. Good positioning there by Pat Bonner in goal. Dolchik going up with Cahoon. Cahoon turning the full back. Good tackle in the end by Dolchik. Having a full test though from John Cahoon. Played short to Robertson. There's Cahoon. Up goes Bannon. Elliot attacks the ball in the box. Good play by the centre half. Here's Galloway. Going with the feet of John Miller. Galloway gets it again. That's for Peter Grant. Now it's Zakanowski. Over on the left is Coyne. Shot on target all right, but that was promising for a moment for Celtic. Jekinovsky spotting Coyne rather late there. And if the pass had gone earlier, Coyne would have had a clear run in and goal. As it was, McPherson blocked his path. Clearly to McKinley. Robertson made the run. Followed across by White. Right anxious to prevent the corner kick. McCreary, now Cahoon. And another late tackle. John Cahoon is on the ground. And Chris Morris was involved in that. The referee will take some action here, I think. It's Chris Morris is in trouble. There's the reason for it. A late tackle on John Cahoon. Well, that's one of the nastier features of the match so far. The fact that players have committed themselves to tackles and continued even when the ball had departed so very dangerous position for a free kick Crab leaves it there's McKinley headed out there by White it's back with Bannon good save from Bonner that was well struck by Eamon Bannon from the free kick it was played in by McKinley 
It was a good clearing header here by Derek White, who timed that well. It broke back into the path of Bannon, drilled that for the corner, and Bonner went down to his left. Check and reach that. And they are certainly having a fascinating pistol, these two down the hills. There's Galloway. Oh, it goes for Miller. He's onside. A great chance for Celtic. Tommy Coyne. 1 0 for Celtic. The destroyer of hearts does it again. Three minutes from half time. It came from the throw. Galloway doing extremely well with that ball through. Miller allowed to go on, the Hearts players claiming offside, Coyne was supporting, and the goal stands. And the Coyne gets another for Celtic. That's an eighth of the season, and five of them against Hearts. Well, the Hearts players aggrieved about goal being allowed to stand in view of that offside claim against Joe Miller there's Scott Crabb heading back and immediate retaliation from John Robertson Hearts fans go wild as Robertson equalises within a minute oh what an explosive couple of minutes the long ball forward the Celtic defence will not be at all happy about this it's Scott Crabb who does some excellent work Face here by Derek White, he nutmegs him, goes inside, forces the ball along, and there was John Robertson with that instant volley, and Hearts are back on level terms. Robertson with his 19th goal of the season. Runs all the way through the Morris, this match being played very much like a cup tie. And there'll be no more action in the first half. We've certainly enjoyed plenty of that in the opening 45 minutes. It was a match full of incident and good football until Tommy Coyne put Celtic ahead three minutes before half-time. The equaliser then coming instantly from John Robertson. Both very interesting goals indeed. The first for Celtic coming when Mike Galloway won a challenge in the middle of the field, released Joe Miller to beat the offside trap through the middle. He sidestepped the keeper and Tommy Coyne knocked in the opening goal. And while Celtic were still celebrating, Hart struck back immediately with Scott Crabb on the right working his way inside, creating that chance for John Robertson. So the half-time score at Celtic Park, Celtic 1, Hearts 1. Second half, the stadium really has been buzzing throughout the interval, following all that action towards the end of the first half. And Hearts have a free kick early on, John Robertson brought down by Paul Elliott. Robertson, the scorer of the Hearts equaliser. He couldn't really have come at a better time for Alec McDonald's men. That's Celtic settled in that lead until half time. May have been different words spoken in the dressing rooms. But they must have been interesting places to be in half time. As both managers exhorted their troops to the effort required for this second period. Celtic having territorial advantage, wind assisted in the first half, but Hearts always looking menacing coming forward. Here's Scott Crabb, who created the equalising goal, and that's a corner kick for Hearts. On the way by Chris Morris. Bannon's corner. Find its way across to Robertson. Blocked on the line by Paul McStay. Wow, what a fine crisp effort that was by Robertson. So close to giving Hearts the lead. Corner kick going all the way across. Robertson just backing off, making space for himself. Got that beyond Bonner. It was Paul McStay who was there to clear. White intercepts. That came off Galloway. That's up possession again with Crab. Taken down by Derek White. Free kick for Hearts. Well, the game sadly has been punctuated by free kicks on a frequent basis. Here's Kidd, Robertson towards Crabb, Elliot read that well, here's Robertson again. Cahoon staying wide, offering an option. And Cahoon took a very sore one there from Mike Galloway. The linesman is flagging and Galloway I reckon could be in serious trouble for this. John Cahoon 
taken some severe damage on that right leg. The referee now going to speak to the linesman on the far side, Mike Galloway, the player waiting in the outcome of this discussion. And Brian McGinley calling Galloway to him. Well, a number of bad challenges in the match. Tackles going in late. Here was John Cahoon going to send this crossover. And it was Galloway who went in with that late challenge. But Cahoon after the ball had gone. Well, Matthew McGinley has been very clear and earnest in his explanation for the decision he has reached. And this based on the linesman's verdict. A yellow card it is. Some anxiety now, clearly felt by Alec McDonald. He's pulling back the substitutes. It looks as though there may require to be an alteration made. Well, Cahoon is a very resilient young man. He'll want to remain in the field. But that's a second heavy knock on that right shin. The free kick to Hearts. There's Bannon and Crab, And that was a superb save by Pat Bonner. Crab can scarcely believe that. Bonner enjoying an excellent spell of form. John Robertson's free kick. The Celtic defence was at sea. Bannon missed that. Crab nodded that down to the corner. The worst place of all for a goalkeeper, but Bonner got down quickly enough. That's Wayne Foster waiting to come on. John Cahoon limps off the field. Well, it's on the Celtic Park. I don't think he's enjoyed very much. But Wayne Foster comes on to use his pace in attack. McKinley with the free kick. Here's a chance for Foster straight away, and Bonner collects. Well, I reckon Wayne Foster will be feeling right now that he would have done better had he been on the field a bit longer. It was misjudged in the air by Elliot. It was Foster going in behind him. He hadn't had a chance to warm up and find his touch. Now Morris. Good running by Coyne. Followed across by Levine. Does Paul McStay with a chance for Celtic? And it's McCreary with a tackle. Great work done there by Dave McCreary, who's been injured, making that vital challenge in Paul McStay. Deliberate ball is by Coyne, a dummy by Jakinowski. He knew that McStay was coming in behind him. He went past his man, then found McCreary waiting to make the challenge. It's a corner kick to Celtic. In swing and misjudged by Henry Smith. He got a hand to the ball. Down goes McPherson. Galloway was involved. McPherson is on the ground. He may have been a lot of pain. And Mike Galloway will be anxious about this because he's been booked already. Referee McGinley is not interested any further. The ball cleared there, palmed away by Henry Smith. Here was McPherson getting to the ball ahead of. Mike Galloway was caught late by Galloway. And the referee seems to have taken a very lenient view of that as far as Galloway is concerned. Having been booked just about five minutes ago for the late challenge in Cahun, survives that tackle on McPherson. Inside from Robertson. Elliott to McStay. Great play again from McStay. He was fouled there by Bannon. Bannon wrestled him to the ground after he had tried to go for the return pass. Great play this from Paul McStay. And then Bannon caught him and pulled him down. Bonner kick this time to Celtic. Elliott and White are in the box. Joe Miller with the signal. Up goes Elliott. Got up well to that corner kick. Under a lot of pressure. Bannon's glancing header. There's Berry. 
Foster breaking on the right. Robertson waits in the middle with Crab. You've got Crab. The kind of chance he's been taking with Consumeries in recent weeks. Good break this by Hearts. Foster using his pace on the right, looking up, releasing the ball early into the path of Scott Crabb with a clear look at goal. The side footed well stopped by Bonner. Grant to White. Now Morris. Good player of defence by Celtic. Here's Jill Miller. Well tackled by McKinley. He got the close quarters very swiftly, McKinley. There's Morris. Running it from McPherson. Looking for a corner kick, and he gets it. Good work by Chris Morris. Joe Miller again. Team the ball up for the corner. Allowing time for Elliott and White to arrive. Smith has committed himself. Blocked by Bannon. Shot by McStay, came off McKinley. Turned by Peter Grant, it's an offside decision against Coyne. Well, Henry Smith will be mightily relieved about this, I'm sure. Took a knock in the midst of all that. Crowded six-yard box, he tried to get two hands to the ball. Really regret not trying to punch it clear. Galloway, first of all, had a shot blocked by Bannon. Then this thunderbolt from Paul McStay coming off Tosh McKinley. McKinley, a long chase now, Robertson trying to get the better of White. Foster turns it wide for Crab. And she's over the top. Well, what a great effort that was from Scott Crab to win the match. The long ball caused the problems here. White headed the ball out, then followed his own clearance. Tried to block this to the side, and Foster just came in with that very determined challenge. Here was Scott Crabb, easing himself to the left of Elliott, and that shaved the crossbar. Grant and McCreary in a tangle of legs, resulting in a free kick to Celtic. Quickly taken, releasing Miller on the right. Turned away by Bannon for the corner kick. Flying swift, attacking move, that by... Celtic, Bannon did well defensively. Joe Miller again with a corner. Elliot trying to take that to the run. Foul by McPherson and Elliot. The two big men together. Elliot has won the free kick. Now uh, this is a superb opportunity for Celtic. Chris Morris has come across to become involved. Well, next day the skipper will call the shots, I reckon. Mike Galloway there too, and Dobchek also has plenty of dig in his left foot. Could be Dobchek, could be Morris, could be Galloway. Every Hearts player back defending. There's Coyne. The courage of Smith. Save the day. Elliot still in the box. Couldn't get a header. Firmly on target. And Henry Smith certainly had to be brave there. It's taken by Dobchek. Broke there to coin. Smith throwing himself at the Celtic player's feet. Very playing it forward. Here's Crab with Derek White. Now Foster, back to Crab, Crab again, and Bonner saves for Celtic. Well, Bonner seems to be enjoying himself all right, but it's not quite a happy occasion for Scott Crab so far. Holding play up here, playing it neatly inside for Foster, who couldn't get a clear shot at goal. Still managed to nudge the ball back to Crab. That came off a defender, and then Bonner was there for the return. Getting up well. Bannon to Foster. Elliott on his own to clear that up for Celtic. The referee checking the watch. And 
brings to an end a very bruising, tough encounter, which certainly was by no means a classic, particularly in the second half. The second half in which Celtic had more possession, perhaps, but Hearts carved out the better chances. In the end, neither side could get a goal to add to the two provided in the first half. One for each side. John Robertson with the equaliser for Hearts. The opening goal scored by Tommy Coyne, his fifth in all against Hearts this season, out of his tally of eight. He really has been a thorn in the flesh of Hearts. But a good performance overall in many respects from both sides, encouraging as far as the Scottish Cup is concerned. The final score at Celtic Park. Celtic 1, Hearts 1. John, a point at Celtic Park is not the worst of results, but were you disappointed with that? I think uh, before the game we'd have taken a draw readily, job, but the team played very well today. And we're a wee bit disappointed that we created so many chances in the second half and failed to take them. But yeah, certainly it's a good, it's a good point for us, and we're just building it hopefully from there. What was the fact that it made these chances come about? It seemed to be long balls were causing a lot of difficulty with you and Scott Crabb and Wayne Foster laterally going through the middle. Was that part of the plan? I don't think it's part of the plan. It's just a normal game. We try to get the ball forward as quickly as possible and put opponents under pressure and really sort of take the scraps from there. And it certainly worked today. We managed to knock balls in behind the fullbacks and try to get players on there. And sometimes it doesn't work, you know, but today it did and we, we got chances and uh, unfortunately we could only get one, but so one was enough to get a draw. Paul, a very hard-fought draw this afternoon. Did you think that was a fair result? Uh, I think on the day, I think it was a fair result. The conditions didn't help the game much and uh, I thought it was a very poor footballing game, really. A lot of aggression, a lot of fight from both teams, but... Uh, and there was a few chances created, uh, but it wasn't much football at all. When you took the lead just three minutes before half-time, uh, you, I take it, would have felt then things were going your way? Yeah, we got the opening and uh, we knew it was near half-time and we are all saying to each other, just keep it tight till half-time and then all of a sudden this opening appears and uh, I'll say they took the chance well, but uh, there's no way Hearts should have scored right after we scored. Now, the whole game was punctuated by a lot of fouls and a lot of very tough marking. You right in the middle of the field, Dave McCreary was your marker. Mm. How do you cope with that? It's very difficult, especially in conditions like this, uh, trying to lose your marker. But we Dave, he works away hard. And I think it's one of those games today where we've just got to work hard against each other. Because as I said, the, the ball wasn't really flowing very much. And uh, as a matter, just trying to get the wee touches in. And in the end, it was a battle in the midfield. 